All right, here we go. Another game of Netrunner. It's Wayland, building a better world versus Gabriel Santiago. Starts off with a nice beanstalk there and installs an ice on HQ immediately to keep Gabe out, keep his credits low. But we've got a sure gamble and a desperado and a sneak door all in the first turn one two three with a click left over to use the sneak door right now I'm getting a stern lecture from my opponent that I should have installed the sneak door and used it three times at the beginning of the turn uh, I'm telling him I only wanted to use it once in order to get the credits once because I'm really in the early game thinking about the economy aspect but he's saying if I had used it and run three times into HQ sure I would have only gotten the two credits once but I would have seen possibly three cards from his hand I would know what his early plays would be what his early ice would be uh, and also he's telling me he has three agendas in his hand uh, there's one of them right um, so yeah I guess they're, it's possible they could have had a lot of agendas in their hand on the first go. So, that's okay. He still hasn't iced up his HQ. So I run R&D. I score again. It's three points. I get a credit with my Desperado. I use my Sneaky Door. I'm going to run super aggressively here. And there's a snare, and I actually only have two cards in my hand. Game over. That sucks. And there you go. You see, he did have a fistful of agendas. So I guess the lesson to be learned here is that you do need incredibly aggressive running, but there is a such thing as too aggressive running, right? Don't leave yourself completely undefended. If I would have just drawn one card during before I made that run things would have been much better off well since that game was so incredibly short let's check another game it's a rematch the same people the same decks Wayland versus criminal I lost the last game in a matter of a minute or two <laughs> like the third turn second turn all right, I run R&D, there's an ice on HQ. And I double sure gamble to pile up on credits. My economy is cut off uh, because of the HQ ice that I probably can't break. So I'm gonna load up with two sure gambles uh, for the foreseeable future. In case they get net damaged away, right, I'll use them before that can happen. Okay, scores a hostile takeover immediately. Get a bad publicity. That helps with the credits. Really, I'm in a tricky situation here, right? I need some sort of ice breaking, right? So I run HQ. Sure enough, it's Enigma. I'm going to need a Crypsis or a Yog or a special order to get one of those two. I run R&D, I get a point, nice. But that's my whole turn, I can't run R&D again. I don't have anything installed yet, and here he goes, fastly advancing something behind an ice. We're tied one to one, but it's not gonna be tied one to one much longer at the rate this is going. So I run to make him prove he's defending it, and he is, he has an ice wall. So yeah, 100% chance that's an agenda. Otherwise, you know, if it was like a June bug or an aggressive secretary, if he was running that, he wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have rezzed. I ran R&D that's still open, didn't find anything. 
See, what I really should be doing here is drawing more cards. So I inside job that, and I do get points. Inside job is awesome, but a lot of times the corp will sort of force you to use it uh, to score, and you only have so many. Another thing is a lot of times the corporation knows you have inside job. If you're a Gabe, they know it's inside job. They will put traps behind an ice and res that ice hoping you'll use inside job and then get trapped, thus losing one of your three precious inside jobs that could have been transformed into an agenda. So now he's double iced and installed something. I run R&D, I'm rewarded again. So I've actually got quite a few points over there. Just because R&D has been open. But the agenda he's advancing now, I don't think I can take. Right. Even if I used an inside job, uh, if I had one, he'd res that front ice that wouldn't get me around the ice wall. I don't have an icebreaker. I don't have anything. I don't have Desperado. I don't have Sneak Door. I think for the criminal deck to really work, you need you know, one of those three things at least. Some sort of icebreaker. Hopefully Crypsis, uh, Desperado, and Sneak Door. If you can't get any of those three, you're in deep doo-doo. The only reason I can do anything at all here is because R&D is open. That's the only reason I've got any points whatsoever. Okay, so I install a compromised employee. Mostly, you know, he's not going to res too many more ice. Um, and now R&D is locked up. But I'm just hoping I got, I don't want to throw those away, and um, I need to get things out of my hand so that I can draw deeper into the deck without having to discard cards. See, every card in the criminal deck is sort of awesome, and you want to use them all and keep them all. But if you want to draw deep into the deck, if you're missing an important card, you're either going to have to use or discard those other powerful events. So you see, my reluctance to discard the powerful events is keeping me from digging deep into the deck. So this Data Raven, I am not taking a tag, uh, but I will take a credit because he res the nice. See, so I'm in sort of a difficult situation here, right? I can't do anything without my important tools, but I'm holding the other important tools I don't want to lose that I would have to discard or use in order to get deeper. So I'll install this ninja. At least I can get into R&D with it expensively. And I can draw more cards uh, without having to discard anything because I played one. Right, he is advancing that card a lot. I am pretty sure it is Project Atlas. Uh, he is going to get a lot of Atlas counters. And here he goes icing up archives before I get the chance to use Sneak Door. Right? That's what I'm talking about. That is the good move. Don't wait. If you know the guy has a fancy tool, oh, maybe he changed his mind. Or maybe he's just putting his hand down there. Anyway. <laughs> Still, I don't understand why people will leave the archives open, right? At least put one ice there if the other player is Noise or Gabriel before they get the sneak door. All right, so here I bring out the Crescentus, right? So even though the Data Raven is expensive, I'll run it, I'll take the tag, I'll use the Ninja and the bad publicity to break it, I'll sacrifice the Crescentus, to derez it, right? And I see a card. Don't see an agenda, but then again, I've been very lucky. So I managed to derez that Data Raven. So if I can get him below four credits, I can run R&D again. Also, if I just do run R&D again, 
and he does res the Data Raven, I'll get a credit from my compromised employee. But he scored the Atlas with four counters. That's a lot of counters. He can really dictate uh, what's going to happen for the rest of this game, even though the score is, I believe, four points for me and three for him. He only needs four more. It actually won't be hard for him to get four more with four counters. And I have no icebreakers except the sentry breaker. I really need code gate breaker the worst. And barrier. So it's like I've got a breaker for the kind of ice I care the least about. Okay, so now I'm starting to throw things out. I'm throwing out the emergency shutdown, I'm throwing out the femme fatale that I definitely don't need because I have a ninja on the table and he doesn't seem to have a lot of sentries going on. I could have used the femme to put a token on the enigma, but doing that would be kind of silly. Uh, number one, runs on HQ would still cost me two credits, so I'd break even economy-wise. He scores another hostile takeover. I think that's all three of them are out. Uh, he's got four points. The game is tied. I threw out my account siphon. I'm not going to be able to use it. Okay, so I used forged activation orders on that. I was so sure it was an archer. I think every face down is an archer. I was wrong. It was a wall of static. That was a waste. Big waste. Uh, but, well, I used a card so I can draw up. Easy mark. I get some money. I desperately need. My economy is starving because I can't get into any servers. Get a second compromised employee. He ices up that server even more. Making sure that if I run there, there's always going to be an ice I don't know about. I sort of always assume the worst, right? Anything face down is Archer. The thing is, if I, if I get some money back, Archer isn't the worst, because I do have Ninja, right? <laughs> in, in a way, right now, Wall of Static is scarier uh, than Archer, because it means I've wasted my click and I'm not going to get in. Alright, so he uses an atlas counter, a couple atlas counters, to go get a beanstalk, which will give him enough credits to advance and score, while also still having enough credits to res his data raven. And he also gets a false lead, which he installs. I run R&D, forcing him to res the data raven, I knew that would happen. I let him pay the four credits. I get two for my compromised employees. I was basically considering that to be sort of a one-time magnum opus. Spend a click to gain two credits. Yes, I was that poor. You know, I figure, and you know, at the same time, it costs him four, so that's that's a pretty good split. Corp uh, minus four, runner plus two with one click. Yep, here we go, drawing cards, looking for any sort of hope here. Uh, anything I can do at all. And I end up, my hand gets full, there's nothing I can really do. I take a credit. There goes a false lead. He's at five points with two Atlas counters. I can't really get into his remote server at all. I can't even get to HQ or I can get into R&D. If I pay a ton of money and take a tag, right? So here we go. I use forged activation orders on his new ice. He's actually out of money, which is the reason I did that. So no matter what that ice is, uh, he would have to trash it. Maybe if it was a hunter, he could res it. So that goes in the trash. He has no money. Because he has no money, I inside job HQ. 
So I get two credits out of that. I can't do this too often. Usually you want to get an agenda if you use an inside job. I see an archer. I'm not wrong to be paranoid about them. Because I accessed HQ this turn, a successful HQ run, I use an emergency shutdown to turn off the data raven. And then I run R&D. Sort of a clever combination there, uh, but I didn't come away with any points. Now I'm in deep doo-doo. He still has a server I can't penetrate. He has two Atlas counters. He can get an agenda and start advancing it immediately behind there for the win. I did, though, in my clever trick, use a lot of cards in my hand so I can start drawing. And this is exactly what he does. He goes, gets a beanstalk. I think that might be the last beanstalk so that he has enough credits to advance that agenda. And is he going to get an agenda with that last Atlas counter? No. He probably think he already had one. He installed an ice out in front. Could be that archer I saw before. Okay, so I run R&D because he doesn't have enough credits for the data raven. I trash a ghost branch. I run again. I still don't see anything. There's not a lot of agendas to be had, right? There's seven on the table. There's probably an eighth one in that server. You know, he does have a lot of one-pointers, so there are a lot of agendas total. But still, R&D is pretty big still. The odds of seeing an agenda in there without a medium or a maker's eye are getting low. But he can get one whenever he wants with his Atlas token. And there you have it. He scores the Project Atlas to get seven points, and the game is over.